about it. Well, hello, lovely listeners. So today I've got the wonderful Marie Scott. Now, Marie is now a functional medicine health coach, and I'm interested to know what that means because I've not really heard that functional medicine term too much in the UK. Um, And Marie's passionate about helping widows and widowers to gain health, humour and love back into their lives. Marie herself was a widower, um, and she's going to talk a little bit about that. And she's also now an author of two books, which I'm keen to hear about because I know that they came about from her own sort of informal writing. So I'm, I'm really keen to hear about that. So Marie's passion now is to really help people that have lost partners and, and husbands and wives to find joy, to find health, to find that energy and that vigor back in their life. And she's living proof that that is all very, very possible. So amazing to have you here, Marie. And can I just tell the listeners, if you're not watching the video, she's got the most amazing hair. <laughs> I just told her, I just told her she looks a little bit like Gloria Estefan, who um, I love from my childhood. Um, so Marie, well, welcome. So happy to have you here. Thank you, Mel. Pleasure to be on. <laughs> so can you give us, um, tell us just basically more about you. I love understanding how people get to where they get to. And yes. off, off record, you were saying that you used to work for Oracle was one of your previous um, jobs. And things sort of changed when you lost your husband, Dave. But I'm um, really keen to know how, what, how your journey has unfolded. So over yes. to you. Yeah, so it's been amazing. Uh, on April 15th, 2018, uh, William David Scott, he was a captain on the Mississauga Fire Department outside of Toronto, uh, took his last breath in my arms and um, just as he wanted at home. And he passed away from esophageal cancer. And in my quest to learn more about food as medicine, I went back to school thinking that I'd learn more about nutrition. And to my great surprise, my journey to becoming a certified uh, health coach led me to a life transformation. And so once I healed my, my body by changing my food preferences, which was quite traumatic, mm. uh, I was able to uh, find new purpose in life, which was to become a functional medicine certified health coach. And so not only did I learn a lot about nutrition and the link between food and cancer, which is quite dramatic, uh, my, I lost my mother that same year to Alzheimer's. And there's also a link between food and Alzheimer's. So between the two, two things um, and my journey through, through widowhood and through the tremendous grief of losing Dave, uh, I was able to transform my, my body, my mind, and my spirit through great practices I learned through Coaching Academy. And uh, I was able to articulate the seven steps to healing that I hope to help other widows and widowers in their grief journey to uh, utilize to overcome grief. And, and the seven steps are, are really uh, my, the most important one, again, is food is medicine. So that began my journey and just my personal health story, just by changing what I ate. Within six weeks, I lost 30 pounds I've been carrying around for 20 years. Really? And I reversed my pre-diabetes. I was off, uh, came off all my prescription meds, like blood pressure, cholesterol, uh, antidepressants, because that's what they do to a widow. Yeah. So I was able to re- re- reverse all of that and totally natural today. So, so how were you eating, you know, because I read that in your, in your little bio and I was like, you know, I think I'm fairly healthy, um, yes. although, you know, my crutch is red wine, um, but, um, you know, in terms of, you know, I tend to try and avoid processed foods and all the rest of it, it's, it's, it's all home cooked and stuff. So how were you eating and how did you get into that sort of pre-diabetes, which is really common these days, isn't it? It is, it is. And it and is, you know, in my mind, in my opinion, it's from all the processed foods that are that we grew up with. Yeah. I remember, you know, my mom used to make cakes from scratch. Yeah. And then when Betty Crocker came out in the 50s, she stopped that. And so we would eat, eat cakes out of a box and everything, TV dinners and and I remember Salisbury sticks. It used to be 10 for a dollar and pot pies and you know, come from a big family of 10. So, you know, obviously the convenience of, mm. you know, having quick meals was, was quite um, attractive. So I also thought I was fit, Mel. I was walking a golf course every week. I was um, 
like lifting weights, working with a trainer for seven years, and I still couldn't shed a pound. And I've been gluten-free since 2016. But when I changed my food preferences, uh, I, I discovered functional medicine and changed my food preferences. Uh, I stopped eating things out of a box. So all of that gluten-free pasta and, and cookies and cake, um, started stopped eating anything out of a box and learned to shop the perimeter of the supermarket. And so my, my, my basket became full of uh, organic vegetables and organic fruits. And, and that simple shift in what I ate changed my entire being. Uh, the widow fog lifted, the energy is like through the, through the roof. And these food preferences, I will never ever call them a diet. It, it is truly a way of life. And something that I hope to teach others that you can change how you feel and um, just by changing what you eat. So I truly believe that food is medicine, like Hippocrates said. So, so you, am I right in saying you lost your husband in 2018? Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. And obviously you went into immense grief at that point. How did you, how did you get from that to all of a sudden wanting to take back control and realizing that diet was a big part of that? Yeah. So I, I had, um, I had just, I tore my rotator cuff in 2016. I tripped and fell over a suitcase in the uh, hallway uh, right the night before going to Honolulu for a work trip. And um, so uh, discovering a, a, a chiropractor in Charleston, South Carolina, where we lived at the time, uh, I, he had an osteopath working with him. He was from London actually. And um, he took a health history. And for the first time in my life, someone actually said, what's, what's, your, what's your family history? What's going on? And discovered all of these autoimmune diseases running rampant through my eight brothers and sisters. My brother George died of ALS. I never knew that was an autoimmune disease. It's Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, my other brother has hypothyroidism. My sister's celiac. My other sister has Graves' disease. And my other sister's breast cancer. So all, and then they diagnosed me with autoimmune hepatitis. And if you ask Dr. Google what the heck that is, I mean, it just floored me. And so I had uh, tremendous gut issues. And after I lost Dave, I was lying on the floor with uh, open, empty arms wondering, who was I gonna take care of now? And the answer came back quickly, you silly. Yeah. And that's when I discovered uh, functional medicine through the Living Proof Institute in Toronto. I flew up there and was accepted into the program. And uh, they put me on what's called the AIP, autoimmune protocol diet. And, and literally within six weeks, I went from an extra large top to a small and went from a, a 12 bottom to a size six. Wow. And this, I, I was watching this transformation thinking, wow, I got down to a size 10 and went shopping. And this is great. I hadn't been this weight in like 10 years, 20 years. And then I got down to an eight, had to go shopping again. And and finally, I settled down to six and it's like, okay, I'm good. I don't want to go shopping anymore. <laughs> so it was really, really dramatic. And the best thing was coming off all those prescription meds. Yeah. And that's really what functional medicine is. It's getting to the root of the issue. It's not giving a, a pill for this, a pill for that, a pill for this. And that's what traditional allopathic medicine does. They give you pills for symptoms, not really saying what's the root cause, what's yeah. causing the high blood pressure, what's causing the cholesterol. So I'm pretty passionate about, uh, you know, getting the word out that you can reverse, even pre-diabetes is totally reversed. You can reverse all of these diseases yeah. just by changing your food preferences. Wow. I mean, I, we all know that the, the relation with food and, and um, health or lack of health, yes. you know, you only have to look around. I mean, I remember like obesity started really in America, didn't it? You know, really big yes. people. And um, and in, in the UK, we used to be like, bloody hell, you know, they're all fat in America or whatever. And now you look around the UK and it's exactly the same. And it's interesting you said Betty Crocker um, brought in, you know, all of a sudden a cake out of a box. And it does feel to me like, certainly in America as well, I think America's probably the worst corporate for it. You know, that's where the fast food chain started and all yes. of that sort of stuff. And now you look around the UK and it looks like America, you know, got McDonald's, Costa, Starbucks, and, you know, all the others everywhere, which was not the case, you know, about 20 years ago. Um, so I can see it with my own eyes, you know, how bad 
people you know and the convenience thing and you're right and it's also the cheap food you know if, if a family's got a big you know if a parents have got a big family and they haven't got much money then they're going to do that aren't they it's going to be yeah. the easiest route and also the less stressful route is just throw it in the oven job done you know yeah um, so yeah that, that's that's interesting what you were saying about the, the food and how you've changed so I'm assuming now that because you said it was quite traumatic as a change to, to, to go from eating out of a box or whatever and gluten-free pastas and stuff like that to all of a sudden have everything organic and vegetables. Was that a kicking and screaming transition or was that a, actually, a, I quite like this. It was, it was amazing, actually, because, you know, I wanted to get to the root of my gut issues. I mean, I was living on Imodium for 20 years. I thought that was normal to have, you know, gut issues every day of your life. Yeah. And so I was really motivated to get to the root of the, the problem and heal my gut. That was the primary motivator. Yeah. And so when I started eating healthy and organic, the change in how I was feeling was almost instantaneous. Wow. It, it was like within a week, I felt, wow, I really feel good. And once you start feeling that good, it's, it's a piece of cake. And it's okay. such a quick transition and and so dramatic I I will never go back to the way I ate I can truly I can truly say that I will never go back to how I was eating before because I know the consequences mm -hmm. and if I eat an egg or have an ice cream I know what's going to happen so if you're prepared for that that's fine but it's not worth going back uh, mm -hmm. to you know I, I keep some large clothes in the closet just as a reminder it'd be wow. really easy to slip back into that but I am so happy and, you know, I, I truly think once I heal my, my body and my mind and my spirit through becoming uh, a, a coach through the coaching academy, uh, I truly let my heart open and in walked the second great love of my life. So it was amazing how that was all connected, you know, healing the mind, body and spirit and in walked Jeff. So it's been, it's been an incredible journey, incredible never dreamed I'd be here so so I'm intrigued in terms of so I'm, I'm presuming you did the health bit first yes. before before you did the coaching so you obviously got healthier and you lost a load of weight you felt energized yeah at that point and I know you said earlier and um, that off camera and um, that you'd been writing a journal you know when you lost yeah. Dave um when was it when you decided right now I want to teach others this so as, uh, as the time progressed, uh, Dave and I spent 30 years together and we, we had a wonderful life together. You know, neither one of us had, and we, I didn't have any children. So it was just Dave and I. So he would come with me on my business trips and, okay. and um, you know, retired for a wonderful 20 years in, in outside of Charleston, South Carolina. So I was very, very grateful for that. And we had a ton of memories and a ton of laughter. And so just writing and, and writing on uh, airplane napkins, uh, just about memories of funny stories at the firehouse and, and um, all of the, the, the trips and, and adventures we had, uh, it was very therapeutic. And I also got into meditation and mm -hmm. I never thought it was my cup of tea. I said, no, no, monkey brain, I can't calm it down. What do you mean I have to sit with myself and just <laughs> you know, not talk? So, yeah. so just by going through uh, 30 days of meditating, it became a, 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 became a non-negotiable part of my morning. So, and through that process of just calming myself down and after meditation one day, I thought there's a book here in this journal and there's napkins and post-its. And I said, there's a book here. And then another day, the 12 chapters came out. And this was three years ago when I started this. And, and the 12 chapters have been kind of rearranged and, and solidified with my, the help of my fabulous writing coach. But all of a sudden, um, found an editor in New York who took on my project and um, said, you've got something here. And, and the book was published a month ago. So it came out December 1st. Very, very helpful? proud. It's called How I Found Meaning and Humor in Widowhood, Firehouses, and Organic Vegetables. Oh. So it's, it's a nod to Dave and the firehouses and, you know, talks about my journey through grief. And, and it's, it's not an easy process. I mean, 
it was about a year and a half after I lost Dave that I thought maybe I want to just open the door and, you know, let myself out a little bit and uh, started to get laughter back in my life and, and thought, you know, maybe it's time to uh, do something different. So I packed up my car and moved to Sarasota, Florida, just, uh-huh. you know, decided I need a change. So it's been an amazing, amazing journey. So that must be your second book. Cause you mentioned you've already yes. got a book. Yeah. So what was the first book and when did that come out? This is amazing. This came out like two weeks before uh, How I Found Meaning came out. And this is a collaboration. Uh, Majid is a uh, wonderful uh, human being. He, this is a collab- collaboration of holistic health practitioners. So we each wrote a chapter in this book. And my chapter is called The Ashes Are Scattered, Now Past the Asparagus. And wow. it talks about the seven steps to healing. So this was an incredible, uh, great collaboration with many of my fellow holistic practitioners. So very proud of that one as well. That's called Wellness Wisdom. Yes. And you said that came out two weeks before the second book. Yes. <laughs> you don't do things by halves, do you? No. <laughs> then I also have three more books in the, in the, in the works. Um, the most fun one is called uh, High Heels to Mud Boots. So okay. Jeff is from Maine and um, rural Maine, a beautiful place in the world, gorgeous mm-hmm. place. And uh, so we joke, we really live two different rea- uh, realities. Uh, so city life in Sarasota, uh, high heels and sandals and going out to dinner and rural Maine where it's hunting and fishing and um, the you know mild, beautiful gravel road up to the, the lake house where Jeff lives. So it is literally high heels to mud boots. Wow, that sounds wonderful. What does Jeff do? He's in forestry. And um, he's been in forestry most of his life. And beautiful story, the, the, he calls it camp, it's a main thing. But um, he cut down the trees that actually became camp. He had the, the wood milled. So he built this beautiful lake house from his own two hands from the wood he cut. And um, as a wedding present, he made me a, a desk. He had saved these pieces of curly maple and it's a live edge beautiful desk and it's just oh. it's gorgeous every time I sit there I'm just in awe of his talents and wow. he's, it's pretty neat and we just added on two bedroom addition and we're hoping to have a widow retreat there in um, in uh, September so that'll be a lot of fun oh it, it sounds idyllic um and remind me how you met Jeff and how that came about yes so Jeff was in Sarasota he was working on renovating beach resorts and I was a, it was an organization up in the Northeast and the project was in Sarasota. So I had just got here the uh, two weeks before and there's a wonderful restaurant uh, called Madison's and um, I, great farm to table uh, meals and I love the food there. And I was supposed to meet my girlfriend and, and she didn't show, but I thought I, I love the food. I just sat at the bar and had a wonderful meal um, by myself. And just having to look over and notice this this handsome guy, this huge grin on his face, dancing the night away. And he was dancing with anybody and everybody and our eyes met. And <laughs> he asked me to dance and we've been dancing ever since. And so <laughs> I have no doubt that Dave put us there together on that dance floor that night. I have oh, no doubt in my mind. Really? That's just giving me angel bumps. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Is that the kind of guy Dave was then? You know, he was like, please don't stay alone. Please find someone else. He wasn't, he never actually said, find somebody else. He he was more concerned about me. And he told his friends and our friend, the Rev, he was more concerned about me and, and, and embracing life again in whatever path I chose when I was ready. And he wanted he wanted that clear that this was his desire for me to embrace life again, whatever whatever um, form that would take. Um, and that, that's my message to others as well. You know, Dave wouldn't want me to just to, to, to die, wait to die crying in the closet because that's what I did the first year. Uh, he'd want me to embrace life again and, you know, let the light back in. Mm-hmm. And so uh, even we had six months together. We knew it was terminal. And um, that the love between us during those six months really just grew exponentially. So, like we were present in every moment and we talked about everything under the sun. Uh, I worked with a therapist afterwards and 
um, wonderful lady in, in Charleston. And she said the most profound, she asked me the most profound question. She said, Marie, do you have any regrets? And I thought, oh my word, no, I have no regrets. Nothing was left unsaid and I have no regrets whatsoever. And that, that made me feel good to come to that realization that, you know, it was a wonderful life together. Um, I still feel his presence with me. Um, I, you know, I call them God winks from, from Dave and, and it's, it's just so many signs and so many things. And, you know, even when you, you turn on your phone in the morning and a picture will come up 10 years ago today, and it just brings back wonderful memories. And Jeff is amazing as well. He, he wants to honor Dave. He knows that I wouldn't be the woman I am today if it wasn't for Dave. And he'd been divorced for 10 years before we met. And he wouldn't be the man he is either without the experiences of, you know, the individuals he was with through the 10 years after his divorce. So we joke, what would have happened if we met 20 years at, you know, before? And it, he said, it wouldn't have worked. We yeah. wouldn't be the people we are. So it's incredible. It is incredible. My, my friend Lee said to me, he goes, how do you rate? He goes, not only did you have one great love in your life, now you've got two. <laughs> so he goes, most of us don't even get one. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> But, you know, just I've only spent um, getting on for half an hour with you the first time I've met you and your energy and your exuberance, it's infectious. Um, it really is. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about life before um, you being a coach? I know you said you worked in Oracle very much in the corporate world, very much the business trip woman. So what did all that look like and and what made you... I know obviously a massive life change with losing Dave would have been yeah. probably the main reason, but how did you get from this is my go, 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 go life yes. um, and enjoying it by the sounds of it to, to where you are now? Talk about uh, life transformation. Uh, I worked for, uh, and, and it amazes me uh, today to think, how did I get to be this old and not know what my purpose in life was? Right. Uh, because for 30 years with Oracle, I was traveling the world and having a great time. Dave would travel with me and we'd have great adventures, business and pleasure, always together. And we'd actually you know, pack up the truck and hit the road and we'd you know, take a road trip from the south of uh, the U.S. right up through Canada and you know, have uh, pr uh, presentations along the way. So we had great adventures, you know, no kids, no pets, fake plants. So we'd just pack up and leave for a month. So... I was traveling and I love the perks of travel because what that did is it allowed us to take uh, trips around the world. And so we go to Australia and spend a week on points and then, you know, travel uh, to can all across Canada using points, hotels and, and, um, and um, uh, airline points. When Dave died, I realized, you know what? I don't need the points anymore. And I was also having meltdowns in, in all the airports that are, you know, across the US, I was still working. And I thought, this, this is not, not resonating anymore. It's not, it's not me anymore. And Dave worked hard to set us up to, to retire, or for me to retire. He was already retired. And so uh, finally, the hardest thing I did without my buddy to talk to, my, my companion, I said, you know, I, I, I'm, I have to retire. I have to leave Oracle. And, and really move on and try to figure out what my life purpose is. And, and so I retired on uh, February of, um, January 31st, actually of 2020. So uh, it was the best thing I ever did. And I, I often joke, I don't know how I had the time to work because yeah. my life is so full right now with all of the initiatives I've got going and, and I've got a retreat planned here at the end of March. So uh, I retired from Oracle and talk about you know, going from a corporate world into the life I have now and uh, becoming a best-selling author, a speaker, and a wellness coach, who would have dreamed? Yeah. And, and, and proving um, the fact that it's not your environment, that you can rise above and find new purpose in life and uh, embrace, embrace life again after tremendous loss laws and I'm living proof I, I keep saying I if I can do it I can help anybody to do that and I think what I'm proposing is I, I'm I'm giving hope I want to shine a magic wand and say you have permission to to embrace life again it's what your your partner would have wanted 
So if somebody, um, somebody that's been widowed is listening and maybe is sat there in a, in a, you know, in a state of despair or just lost, what would working with you look like? How would it get them from where they are now to where this imagined amazing vision is? The best way and the, the, the way I'd love to, um, to build the community of, of like-minded widows and widowers is to join my Facebook group. I have a private Facebook group, Widowhood to Wellness. And it's the best way because it's a safe environment. I vet everybody, make sure that the, you know, they're really a, a widow or widower. And it's a safe environment in a, in a community of like-minded people who know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, you're part of a couple and then you're not. So every single thing is different. And to be able to, to speak to other people who are going through the same, the same journey uh, doesn't look the same for two people, but to be surrounded by like-minded uh, widows and widows is a tremendous help. And that's what I did as well. I reached out to widow groups and you know, listened and talked. And, and, um, and then I also um, teach my seven steps to healing. So join my widow, my Facebook group, Widowhood to Wellness, and learn about the seven steps to healing. Do you want to talk about those seven steps? Absolutely. Yeah. And so you can probably guess the first step is food is medicine. Yeah. I'm so passionate about that. I love to cook as well. So uh, the next book is Cooking with a Side of Kleenex. So, uh, <laughs> you know, going from cooking for two and, and to cooking for one was pretty, uh, pretty traumatic. But I did it because I knew if I didn't cook well, if I didn't cook for myself, I wouldn't feel well. If I didn't feel well, I wouldn't want to live. So true believer that food can help the energy and help lift the widow fog. And so that was that's the most most important. And Jeff and I are going to have a cooking show, uh, Cooking with Jeff and Maria on my YouTube channel. Nice. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. So the second step is improve sleep. And I know when I lost Dave, uh, 30 years sleeping next to this man, all of a sudden you don't sleep anymore. That was the oh, most, yeah. the worst thing. I and if you're not it. sleeping well, you're not going to feel well. So that was the, 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 the next thing area of uh, the seven steps to healing, then joyful movement and um, moving also helps you lift the widow fog. It makes you feel good. And it can be as simple as just get up and stretch five minutes every hour. That's my motto. And I also like to work out and at the gym and, uh, and and garden and walk and golf and yoga, many ways to move, but that's an important part of the steps to healing and meditation. And I said, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. But if I can quiet myself in for 10 minutes a day and just be totally at peace in the moment with myself, that's made a tremendous difference in my life. It's been three years now since I've been meditating every single morning. And um, that's an important step. The next step is increase laughter because when you, when you get laughter back in your life, you're going to feel better even more. And I know when I, Jeff and I wake up every morning laughing and it's, we just, it's part of our life. It's, it's incredible. And I remember the first time it took about seven or eight months after Dave died. First time I laughed, it's like, wow, what was that noise? I, I had to do a double take because I hadn't had laughter for so long. So that is an important step to, to healing for sure. And finally, two, two last steps of develop healthy relationships. And that's another thing with joining community of like-minded widows and widows. People don't know what to say to you. Like your okay. friends, say, most of the time say the wrong thing. I know what you're going through. No, you don't. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> so develop healthy relationships and, and surround yourself with smart friends because you're going to need it. You know, uh, the incompetence in that first year is incredible. You know, stupid human tricks and leaving the gas pump in the car and driving off. And so um, develop healthy relationships is so key. Unsubscribe to negative family and friends family too. And that was key. Uh, just, just surround yourself with, with positive people. And then finally find new purpose. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is find new purpose. Otherwise you're not going to want to get out of bed in the morning. How, how do you advocate that somebody finds their purpose? 
for me, uh, it was through journaling and becoming a health coach and going back to school and learning something new. And that's a, a tremendous uh, avenue. Go back to school, learn something new, take a course. A uh, lot of uh, community colleges have, you can audit free courses, find out if there's something new that might interest you. I never dreamed I'd become a health coach, never in a million years. I also never dreamed I'd be a widow either. Yeah. So, uh, you know, also pick up hobbies that you might've let go by the side. Maybe you're into music or dancing, uh, embrace old hobbies again, like gardening, discover new things that make you feel happy. And there's so many different ways you can do that. But to me, that's the key. Find new purpose so that you want to get out of bed in the morning. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I am a life purpose coach. Um, so I, you know, and what I do is, is allow people to discover what their core values are. Yeah. Because we all think we've got like, you know, everybody wants to have fun or, you know, freedom or whatever as, as a core value. But some of our values are not as exciting as that. Um, and when you're actually present, you know, when you're presented with that and you're like, wow, I didn't even know. And now, but, but I understand why, because it's all about life experiences. Then it really gives people a sense of um, who they truly are. And at that point, you know, when you understand why you are the way you are and why you are passionate about certain things and not other things, then you can start to see uh, a future and a vision that is actually aligned with yes. who you are and who you are today because obviously who you were at 20 is different to 30 at 40 at 50 it changes all the time doesn't it yeah, so it um, does. I'm a big advocate of purpose and yes. uh, yeah brilliant and my my purpose my passion is to help others learn to live well through clean eating learn to laugh more by surrounding yourself with funny people and watching funny movie and and perhaps even find love again yeah. And um, my, that's my mission and purpose in life, part two. Oh, wow. Um, what's, so you, you said you've got some more books coming up. Um, yes. Do you know what they're called? Yes. So the, they're all in the works. Uh, so there's uh, Cooking with a Side of Kleenex. Yeah. Because and it's, the subtitle is Cooking for One, Two, or Twenty. And so when you're two and you think, oh, it's just me, I'm not going to cook, I'm going to eat popcorn or cheese and crackers. Uh, that quickly went went south. It's like, no, if you don't cook, if you don't eat healthy, you're not going to feel well. Mm -hmm. And so that that um, that was uh, uh, definitely my my passion. Uh, so that's I'm having fun with that cookbook. So each 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 recipe has a story. Like my mom growing up taught us all how to cook. In fact, in her obituary, I wrote, "Mom instilled in all of us a love of cooking, and in some of us a love of baking." So I'm a cook. I love to I love to feed people just like my mom. And so the next one is 40 things to do when you're a widow. Okay. And um, the final one that I'm having a lot of fun with is called high heels to mud boots. Yeah. You know, the journey from city life to, to country life and and all of the adventures that that we've had. We our honeymoon was amazing. We spent a week in Sarasota in high heels. Then we went elk hunting in Idaho. Uh, Jeff won the elk lottery and so we spent uh, three weeks in Idaho and then we went to Camp Widow in San Diego and then went to uh, Maine for deer hunting and so it was an incredible honeymoon wow. it was great fun and in fact our wedding in September in Bar Harbor was a camo themed wedding we asked everybody to wear a piece of camo so the pictures from that wedding were hysterical camo <laughs> camouflage oh camouflage right <laughs> yep so it was, it was incredible. Uh, it was perfect. A uh, lot of laughs. My brothers walked me down the aisle in full ghillie suits. And if you don't know what that is, they look like a big bush. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was hysterical. Absolutely brilliant. Oh. Yeah. So, so those kind of adventures will be in the, the book, High Heels to Mud Boots. And we've had a lot of fun and, uh, you know, hope to spend the rest of our life together having adventures. And Oh God, yeah. I'm sure you will. He, he sounds as exuberant as you are. So um, it must be, it must be fire all the time. Um, it is. <laughs> so, so remind me, so remind me of the two books that have just come out. Yes. So How I Found Meaning and Humor in Widowhood, Firehouses and Organic Vegetables and Wellness Wisdom, 
the collaboration of holistic practitioners collaborated on that book. So both can be found on my website, Marie Scott Wellness, yeah. and um, Instagram, Facebook. My Facebook private group is Marie Scott Wellness, Widowhood to Wellness. So yeah. um, join that group if you're a widow or widower, and, and just follow Marie Scott Wellness for cooking tips and, and um, recipes and uh, fun stories about you know our life together. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Um, God, I hope I have as much fun um, <laughs> as you're having. <laughs> um, I like to um, I like to leave these interviews with um, just some whatever you feel called to say. You know, if there's somebody listening right now that is you know really wanting to improve their life or is just inspired by you, um, um, what would you like to say? Anything at all. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope that you can shine a light in a dark place and embrace life again. That's what your partner would have wanted. Oh, I truly feel that. Yeah, I know. I thought that's just going to be age, age on pumps again. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, thank you, Marie. It's been an absolute pleasure. Really hard you, to meet you. And I, I'm going to wish you all the best. I don't need to because you've already got it sorted. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, I, I hope that our paths cross again at some point. Yes. Um, yes, for and, sure. Yeah, when those new books come out, drop me a note and then maybe we can get you back on. Yes, thank you. That'd be wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mel.